Knitters. I'm Mary Annarella, also known as Lyrical Knits, and this is a tutorial to show you how to join a particular cowl pattern that I'm going to be publishing over this summer into the round, and I just want to show you how it works. Um, this little blob in front of you is actually a triangle shawl where I, you start it from casting on um, for the garter tab, cast on, and you knit it back and forth and it gets wider as it goes. Like you can see where the triangle was here when I was doing this garter stitch up to there. So this is actually on um, a circular needle and it can't be too long. It needs to be short enough so that I can work in the round. So it makes it harder to see um, what the that this is actually a triangle so I can kind of spread it out a little bit here but you can see this is the right side and I've knit all along up here and then on down to the lower edge okay so first up just let me tell you a little bit about this yarn this is um, I'm working with two yarns here and they are both from the neighborhood fiber company which dyes these beautiful um, bright colors. Bright color seems to really be their thing and I just absolutely fell in love with this colorway which is called Del Rey. And here I am using Del Rey in both their loft mohair silk lace weight yarn and their here, this you can see this little garter ridge right here, which is knit up in their rustic fingering. So this is a pattern, and the pattern does not have a name yet. Otherwise, it would tell you what it what it is. Um, although by the time I publish this YouTube tutorial, I will definitely have a name for it, and I will pop in links to the pattern for you. Uh, but here I have knit alternating with one yarn or the other and then sometimes both yarns at the same time which really makes it nice and soft and lovely and I created this pattern in part because I wasn't so sure that I was going to want to work with mohair, mohair silk myself and I, I, I kind of got bit by the bug but I thought you know what there are probably other people who are not so sure that they want to knit say a larger project like a big shawl or a sweater with um, mohair. So this is a small project where you can just buy one 25 gram skein of the Neighborhood Fiber Company's um, loft yarn and test it out with some of their rustic fingering weight or you know maybe you just want to test it out with something you have in your stash too but it gives you a nice little taste of what it's like to work with mohair and whether or not you know if you're sensitive to it or not so it's just a nice nice way to give mohair silk a try without having to buy like a big hundred gram skein of mohair mohair silk that's that's a fairly big commitment and with neighborhood fiber company you can buy just a 25 gram skein of this mohair silk anyhow I have this triangle right here and this is going to turn into a cowl so how will this turn into a circular cowl you, you want to ask well okay, I want you to take a look we're gonna fold this triangle along the spine here so here's the triangle spine and we're going to fold it so that the right side is facing out so pardon me I did not weave in any of my ends I don't weave in my ends as I go I'm terrible about that Raise your hand if you are too, but here we go. Alrighty. So I have folded the triangle in half and you can see where my marker up here near the center stitch, where that was, it's right, right up here. Well, what I'm going to do is place a marker right here. Oops, and I don't have my marker yet. I will be right back while I get my marker. Ha, I must have just dropped this new little marker, my second marker, on the floor right by the by the table here. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is actually going to be the bottom edge of the cowl, and we are going to start working this circularly. So let's, let me show you again. Okay, here's my triangle, and this is the wrong side facing. I'm going to fold it over like this. Okay, so to show you, now this is my last stitch right here that I have just worked, and here's my working yarn right here. I'm going to fold this over and knit this stitch that is over here on my other needle, the other end of the circular needle. So to do that, I'm just gonna fold it kind of like that. There we go. 
So here's the top of my triangle. This is the right side here, although back in here that's the wrong side. I'm going to leave that alone. So here's the stitch that I just knit here, and I'm going to place my marker, and now I'm going to knit this next stitch here, and we will be working in the round. So there we go. Okay. All right, so I have just worked that next stitch. All right, so I've knit this stitch. Now I'm going to knit around up to the next marker. Okay, this is really, really boring, but now we're knitting in the round for a little while. And we have basically just joined our work in the round and we will be doing increases and decreases, increases at one of the markers and decreases at the other marker. So the number of stitches for both sides of each marker will be this will stay the same each round. Now we're going to knit in the round for just a little for a little while, a few more inches, and then I will come back and show you what else we do next. All right, so now I have knit around up to that first marker that I had placed at the center stitch of the original triangle, and I just want to show you that I'm going to go right past it on this first row here. There are no increases or decreases on that very first row. There we go. This is not the beginning of the round. The second marker that you placed when you joined the whole thing in the round, that marker will actually mark the beginning of the round. Okay, I've been doing a lot of knitting and I have finished the in the round portion of this cowl. As you can see, okay, I have things on a circular, the circular needle and I've just been working around and I've got this tube here that's kind of funky shaped. I'll twirl it over this way to show you, but here's, here was my cast on right here and we knit a triangle until it got about, you know, this yay wide and then we joined the whole thing in the round down in here and now I have worked in the round all the way up to here and now it's now the cowl is deep enough and we're going to start working back and forth and what we're going to do and again this looks like a hot mess a beautifully colored hot mess Alrighty. now what we're going to do is knit up to the top I'm knitting around here and we're going to basically fill in this Pull this down here. Fill in this area here with a triangle where we work from the triangle from the outside in. So the rows are going to getting, be getting shorter and shorter and shorter each time. So here's how we do this. Time. So here's how we do this. Alright, so I have almost knit up to the top marker right up here just a couple stitches away from it and oh, oh I'm four stitches to the end I'm supposed to knit to five stitches in the end so I'm just gonna tink that last one back right there yeah, come here and I'm going to slip slip knit and then knit three up to this marker. All right, so here we are. I am not gonna slip the marker. Now I'm going to turn my work. And basically these, will, these three stitches here that I just knit, those will be my garter edge and you know, we'll be going this way with it. And I'm going to work back around to this marker here. Now you can take this marker off, but I'm going to leave it on there for a couple rows myself just to make sure that I don't like 
jump over things. Um, and you'll see, you'll see what I mean when we get there. But I'm going to turn my work. And now we are working in the round. I mean, we are working flat. And I'm going to knit these first three stitches. One, two, three, because they are my garter edge. I'm working this part in stockinette, so I'm actually going to purl around and down to the lower marker. I'm going to slip that marker and then knit back up to the top marker. And I will show you what it looks like when we get there. Okay, now this is a wrong side row, and so I'm purling it because we're working in stockinette, like I said, and I am almost down to this lower marker. And I know it looks like we're knitting in the round. We're not. We are actually working back and forth now. Okay, so I'm going to purl that last stitch before the lower marker. Just slip the marker and keep going. There is nothing else to do here except just a purl to the end of the row. But where the end of the row is, is going to be back up at that upper marker. And I'll show you that in a sec. All right, and I'm back. I have purled around to three stitches before this upper marker. Now this upper marker right here is, is the one where we turned our work. So over here, this is the beginning of our wrong side row, and we have purled around to back here. Now I'm going to knit those last three stitches because they are going to be in garter. I am not going to slip that marker. I'm going to turn my work to the right side. And you can tell it's the right side because this is stockinette right here. And I designed it that way to make it a little easier for us to keep track. I'm going to keep this marker in place because you see, I don't want to like, I, I, I just don't want to have to like miss things and start working in the round again. So I'm going to leave that marker there, knit the first three stitches. And because we are basically working a triangle from the outside in, this right side row is a decrease row, so I'm going to knit these two stitches together. There we go. And then I will knit to the last five stitches of this row. Do a decrease and then knit those last three stitches. Turn my work and go to the wrong side row, and I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. And as a little bonus, I thought I'd show you my progress. The cowl is almost done. You can still see that I have a bunch of stitches on the needles here, but it's really easy, easy to see the progress and what we're doing here. Basically, we're just working a triangle shawl from the outside working in. And what we're doing is we're making a decrease up here, a decrease up here at, at what is a garter edge. And along the spine down here, we're making decreases as well. And so we just keep knitting back and forth until we get to about here and then we'll just bind those stitches off to each other um, together using the three needle bind off although you could definitely graft with using kitchener stitch if you prefer to do that but i just wanted to show you what this looks like let's here let me turn this on its side so you can get a gist of what's going on here a little bit okay now i'm going to roll this over and show you something here we go. Here is where we cast on our garter tab, cast on down here for the shawl, and we made a little triangle going this way and this way and this way and this way. And finally, okay, I'm gonna rotate this a little bit so you can just see this. And we kept doing, making our little triangular shawl until the whole thing was wide enough to fit around your neck. And then what we did was we folded it in half. So here, here again, down here at this little corner here is where we cast on with our garter tab cast on and we made our triangle shawl basically. Same deal as making a triangle shawl until it got to be, you know, that wide. Well, you know, if I could unfold it, which I can't do now because we joined it in the round. Remember we folded it over and we knit all those stitches down here and we worked up the same ones way back up here. And then we just worked in the round for a while and that was to make the cowl taller. And when the cowl was finally tall enough, like let, let me see, this is down here. This was the tippy top of our triangle. And when we started working in the round, we were 
decreasing along this edge here and increasing along this edge here until it got to be as tall as, got to move this gal down here, up to here. And at that point, we started working back and forth again and again, doing our second triangle from the outside in. Now I'm folding it like this just to show you, not to show you my unwoven in ends. I always wait till the end for that. But back here, okay, this is the wrong side of our second triangle. Now, right back here at this spot was where we had our top marker. Uh, what are we calling that? Marker A. Um, and that's the one where I had you leave the marker in place while we worked up here, turned our work, and came back down around this way. See, now what we're doing, now that it's small enough, you can really see what's going on here. There we go, that this edge here is going to be coming in this way, and this edge over here is coming in over here. But when we first started this last part, this final triangle, it was back here. These stitches, this needle was like in here, and we were having to knit down, make a decrease at the spine, knit all the way back up, and then turn. But we had that marker right there, and it was you were really tempted, I was really tempted to just slip it and start knitting in the round again, and that's, that's not, not how this project works. But I just thought I would show you how this looks, and things are really taking shape. And just a little note about some of the areas where where it's worked with just the mohair lace or down here, for example, just the single ply fingering. Um, it's a different texture and it looks really kind of wonky. Um, even the areas down here that are that are garter stitch, um, sh uh, switching between the fingering weight and the lace weight looks kind of wonky, but it really blocks out very nicely. And I'll show you a finished blocked, blocked cowl in a little bit. I'll take a look. Now my little cowl has had a bath, meaning I let it soak for, oh gosh, probably four or five hours just in a bowl full of water to let all the stitches saturate and look how, look at the gorgeous halo on this. It's, it's pretty light, right? But the stitches have evened out so much and it's just shining and pretty and very soft. And what's really nice about wearing a cowl that has a mixture of the lace weight and the fingering weight here is that the lace just gives it a lightness and it just kind of collapses things a little bit. So it just makes a nice soft drape around your neck that is just so pretty. And see how things pretty much evened out? The, I mean, the edges are going to have variations up here because you're going from lace weight to an, an alteration between the fingering weight and the lace weight back to lace weight right there. But, um, it just gives a really nice soft drape and a pretty halo. Let me just turn this around this way for you too. All right, and this was actually where we cast off and finished. So there you have it. We made it through a lovely cowl project and I hope you've enjoyed it very much and I hope you enjoy making the pattern. Have a great day.